Hi, I'm Nate Murphy and I'm kind of like a pretty mediocre climber who's just been trying to step things up a little bit. In the spring I came to Yosemite and I achieved like a kind of long-term goal of free climbing the westy face on the Leaning Tower and since then it was kind of like a logical progression, maybe just try something bigger and harder on El Cap. My friend Alex was super psyched on Muir, there's a route called the shaft and it's a 33 pitch route. Um, goes at 13C and it just has like loads and loads of really amazing looking pictures so I was quite keen to come and check it out. The grades don't really easily translate into UK grades but if you just base like the midpoint E grade it's kind of like got 2 E8s, 1 E7s, 7 E6s, 11 E5s, 3 E4s and 8 E3 or lower so it's a pretty stacked wall. So just pack in to go up to El Cap. Um, the pitch three from the top is a 513C, which is 8A plus, um, so it's pretty hard. Um, and just kind of like packing up the stuff into the wool bags. We've got lots of ropes, gear, uh, and just gonna hike up. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I can't even. I'm figuring out what I'm wearing tomorrow. Picking your outfits. <laughs> That jacket. This hooks on. It's not a. It's not a hat. It hooks onto the jacket. It's just a hood. Best thing about the hull bag is I've got my own sunshade. Oh yeah. Just jogging up these fixed lines. Haul in my pig behind me. Kind of not the most comfortable thing to do. I'm probably doing it wrong. Such an amazing profile of El Cap right here. We had a bit of an epic coming up here. <laughs> a lot of tears. <laughs> I got real scared down there, and so any little bit of scary, I just go over the edge. I just, I'm, I'm more scared than I've probably ever been in my life. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal. I walked up a slab, I cried the whole way. But we're here. This is a really sweet bivy right in the top of El Cap. I love how easy it is to make fires in these places. It's just incredible. Can't really get better than camping out in the wilderness and having a cool fire. We'll have the fire and then we'll have like this amazing star show that the universe is gonna provide us soon. Really amazing. I'm just gonna point the camera up so you can see. Um, I'll just refocus. Hammer's just coming down now. She's probably quite terrified. It's her first time wrapping in and it's just gonna be crazy. The exposure you get when you get over this edge, pretty massive. How does it feel, Tama? It's good now that I'm here. Coming down the first two was like, okay. Hold up, Grigri, you got me. It's good. Now that we stopped, I feel great. It's awesome. This is like the craziest view. Check out this pitch. It's totally epic. Warm, perfectly beautiful corner. And from that block down, it's a really nice um, 12B. Just unsighted that as a warm up. So on this wall, that is a good foothold. That's an average foothold. That's a really good foothold. Yeah, coming up. This is the gets a lot smaller between fingertips. The low section of this pitch seems to be okay. Just need to sort out the next 15 feet and then maybe, maybe it's doable. It's an awkward way to get dressed. It's pretty hard this, but now it's linked two sections of the crux. But to put it together is hard and just need to learn how to climb this stuff. Another morning on El Cap. <sighs> the crack is just wet, 
just makes it so hard to climb. But I got a high point and I think if it was drier I could have got those five more moves to the to the kind of rest. It's a little frustrating. So hard for me I, to let my body relax onto the feet holds, the tiny. I think I can trust, should be able to trust my feet more. This is school. I'm going to school right now. I'm learning this stuff. Just jogging out now. Gonna go back down to the valley. But what a place to be. Today we're gonna to drive in to do the facelift, which is a kind of clean up initiative, um, mostly organized and arranged by climbers. I think since it started, they've lifted like a million pounds of garbage and trash and old cable and old industrial stuff from the valley. So it's a really cool thing to get involved with and really great fun. So we've got our litter picking kits for the facelift, the assembly facelift, and we're gonna to go to Chapel Wall and clean that place up. We're gonna boss it. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of Doo Doo Hunters. Today on Doo Doo Hunters, we're gonna find some of the most famous spots for doo doo in behind rocks. Let's get it! Ready today? Tamar has found some underpants, some cigarettes, a jumper, some socks. Looks like some sicko just got behind a rock, smoked himself, filled some bags of soil, and took off his clothes. Who knows why? And who knows what we'll find behind the next boulder? That's why we are the Doo Doo Hunters. Oh, oh, there's some. We found it all. Piece of plastic. What sicko dropped that? Ah. Oh. Looks appears to be off some food. But wait, We've got some competition. Just over there, Tara. Oh. There's some other Doo Doo Hunters. That's a. Let's, let's make our way out of here before they see us. We're probably on that turf. Okay. Hold on. Look, look, look! Oh, f me! Oh, jeez! I wanted to hike up to the top of El Cap today, but because of the rock fall and they're doing some work, they just closed the road for all access. So now I'm gonna to have to hike around the road on the other side of the river, then probably just cross the river wherever I can. Everything is coated in dust. Absolutely crazy. It was a big rock fall. Might not be the best idea. Water is pretty cold, but this is a great place to cross. It's not too deep, just fast flowing. This is certainly one of the more interesting hikes into El Cap I've done. Oh man, what a mission. So it's not as early as I should be in the morning, but you know, whatever. Um, and I'm about to wrap in. And what I've done is I fixed my rope to the anchor, but I left some slack so it's got some weight. And then I'm sitting on this. This is a micro sender. And it just kind of like goes up the rope really easily. This thing won't break. So the worst case scenario, for some reason, if this device fails, I'm gonna fall down, hit this ledge a little bit, and then come down to the end of this loop. So, shouldn't die. So I'm gonna aim for a 45 minute rest and try and get some power back. But it's getting there. I can feel it's kind of coming, working out the feet. There's just like one little section, like three moves, which I kind of fluff sometimes. So I just need to like work that out. So amazing what I can see right now. Yesterday, it was basically dry. Today, almost every hold is soaking wet. I don't fucking be asked. I feel burnt as well. I really worked hard yesterday. I think I'm just gonna bail out of this place. So frustrating. Such a 
long way to come up, spend two nights, bring all your food and your stuff and your water or whatever, just to work for one morning. Big wheel projects are really, really hard work, especially when you're punching a bit above your weight or trying to. After linking the key crux sections together on that pitch, I was kind of confident I could do it on, on red point. Whether I could do it at the end of the wall was pretty dubious, but at least I knew that the climbing was more or less within my ability. My friend Eli came to the valley. Um, he had never done a wall before, um, but he was quite a strong climber, so it was quite fun. We just went up and we were just going to get on it. This, me and Eli, we're going to cut the pigs, we've filled our water, we we'll just basically go wall style, working the pitches. This is our food, working our lunches. Lots of dried fruit, cliff bars, these protein bars have been in a flavour pretty good. Nuts, so we're just going to try and work out how we do it for breakfast and dinner, which we still need to buy. I don't know, how much do you think it is? pounds maybe. Oh easily, yeah. <laughs> Let's get up there. Here we go. Oh, it's hard. Can't say I really want to lead it. Leading that would be vicious. Super. Yeah, just proper Yosemite climbing that. I'll tell you what I'm not good at. This is Eli's sixth trad lead. And he chose like a relatively benign place to do it. So you just led up to Silverfish Corner. This thing, look at that line. I like the squammer. I think it's good for the Yosemite granite. Technical. But these arrived like brand new the other day. How's it going, Eli? Good, it's almost dinner time. The big wall was super fun. Setting up the bivy was hectic, <laughs> to say the least. It got dark really fast. <laughs> and then the headlamp's out. It's a hanging blay. Yep, no ledge to stand on. We've got some cheese, salami, nice. some sag paneer. Did we, and what happened with the other sag paneer? Oh yeah, we have a, a little casualty in the bag. Snowing ash. <laughs> Huge fires off to the east. <laughs> Actually making the sky red. After that evening, I was just feeling beat down and Realizing that there were so many of these kind of mid-12 pitches, um, kind of like E4, E5, um, or E6 dependent, and I just realized that you've just got to be cruising them. You can't red point that many pitches, and then you get to the cruxes. And it's kind of ironic that I wasn't particularly intimidated by the cruxes. The crux pitches, you can kind of spend time on them. They're kind of like aesthetically kind of easier. There's 12 Ds on that route, which I went up one time and I'm like, okay, I could do this again. It's not a problem. I know what I'm doing. But then there's 12 Bs, which is just like this funky Yosemite style climbing and I'm terrible at it. 
this morning. I want to sleep more. But check out the view. Pretty cool little sunrise going on. Oh, just kind of intimidated by the climbing we're gonna to have to do today. I'm gonna to go down, rework the traverse pitch. Then we go down over there somewhere, and then we go up again. How was your first night? Slept, slept super well. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Just, besides the smoke, everything yeah. was perfect. So much smoke. These wildfires. I'm not sure I approve. That morning, led a couple more pitches, and one of them was like 11D, and it was legitimately quite scary. Um, quite poor gear, and I really ran out to a peg you could wobble with your finger. And I was just like, I don't know, like, I'm done. Um, and it was just, it's just genuinely like a, a weight lifted from my shoulders. Like, actually, you know, I'm not quite ready for this route. Um, I don't have the necessary assembly style skills. So, had a good sleep last night. I decided, I don't know, I think this route is too much for me. And it seems at the moment my head is not in a great place for, for hard leading. In the spring I was like super psyched and yeah, it's good. Like it's taking big falls, just getting up in its grill, but today it's not happening. So what you're seeing now is an up bail. We're just going to go up as fast as we can and we'll be off before the storm comes. Hanging on that block. Yeah. But wait, what's that block held on by? <laughs> Not a lot! What are you doing and why? It's quilling the tangiest rope in the world before it tangles with all the other ropes. And we're on Chicken Head Ledge. It's an amazing ledge. Look at it, and the sunset is just happening right now. Pretty damn cool. And this is like Probably the best ledge I've ever been on. Just amazing. And our route carries on up there. Carrying on with the... The bail. The up bail. The upward bail. Stylish up bail. Yeah. Look at this mess. <laughs> I can't do it from this actually. Somehow failure is always more interesting than success. Every time I've gone and succeeded on something, the requirement for introspection and learning is somehow diminished by the fact that it went well. Guy gave to climb XYZ, it was hard, but he overcame because he's strong. It's pretty much the story of every climbing movie ever made. This video is a bit different. Guy goes to climb XYZ, finds it hard, lacks motivation, has poor head game, and bails. It's quite close. Damn, that was so fast. Crazy chat boil. The jettiest of boils. Today the smoke of the wildfire went down the other valley system, kind of missed the main part so much. Much nicer this morning. I wouldn't get rained on by ash quite as much. Hello. Video <laughs> videotape my first wall poo. <laughs> Pooping in a bag like normal. <laughs> Make a big fuss. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> give me stage fright. <laughs> Today at cooking school, we're going to show you how to make oats in a jet boil. Make the water hot with fire. Second, open the package. Be sure that when you open the package, you open it at the top, not the middle. Then, put the package in the hot water, stir vigorously, and you're done. Just been doing this pitch, technically easy as to climb in. It just goes down this like, Ledgy, bushy, off widthy, struggly with just loose blocks in it. Vicious. Uh, but the rope drag is so severe. I'm just going to pull up all the rope, make a fixed anchor for Eli Tajuma, and I'm just going to have to sew over the last bit to get to the ledge. Look at the smoke migrating its way out of the valley. Managed to break my gree gree. Climbing off width, must have got stuck out and then I pushed off it with my back. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 That's some bullshit. How's it going, Eli? It was clear cut. I just didn't want to project the route anymore. And the question is why? I've had other projects which are hard and I've persisted on them and just kept going. Perhaps it was because it was such a massive challenge and it was not something I'd even really dreamt of doing. I had not even Googled the route or studied the topic before arriving in the valley. Perhaps it was because after nine months of track climbing, I was losing my drive for it. Perhaps it was just being in the hot seat and having to work out all the beta. It was just getting a bit much. At that point in time, it was probably a mix of all three, um, but it really boiled down to two things. I was not good enough. I felt like I could successfully red point the crux pitches, especially if you line them up on the ground. But in between them, there are loads of mid to high 512s and I was just not cruising them. I was finding them hard. To do a route like this, 512B should not be an issue. Although 7B would be no problem on sport, on this funky Yosemite weirdness, I am just not good enough. And number two, I didn't want it bad enough. In spring, I wanted the leaning tower badly. It meant something to me. I took huge whips, I tried to climb it when it was soaking wet and running with water. This time, I just didn't want to fall at all. I didn't want to take the risk. And to take the risk and to fire up the cylinders, it seems that I really need to want it. Yeah, jump back up. <laughs> Good job, man. <laughs> In all, I freed, or very close to freed, 22 of 33 pitches. I also sent my first Trad 13B. And I learned a lot about what it takes to do a route like this. I know how I would approach it if I was going to go back and try it again. I know the strategy, the approach, and the training that I would need to do. I'm going to let this one brew in my head. Maybe I will want it enough in the future. Maybe this could still be the standard climbing story, and this is just the bit where I struggle. 
Time will tell. I feel no pressure. And now for a special feature, merits of the mullet. So Eli, you have been sporting this fantastic mullet for the last few weeks. Now, what's the reason for the mullet and why are you trying to bring it back? The mullet is the ultimate climber's haircut because I can wear a helmet, no problem, no hair in the way. I can climb all day in the hot sun without worrying about burning my neck or my ears. And if it's cold, It'll also keep me warm. It's also the ultimate in style. The mullet is definitely coming back in fashion. I see it all around the valley. Catalonia for sure. Cyrano is covered in mullets. Actually, Loman, Idaho seemed to be a bit saturated as well. Imagine. No, it's, a, it's an 80s resurgent. That's what's happening now. So that's the end of Merits of the Mullet.